So I got to ask what my opinion was on uh, authentication and uh, what the best practices for user authentication and authorization was. Now, before I go into the details, uh, authentication and authorization are two different things. And so one of the things that you're going to have to go is go look that up, um, authentication and authorization. One is the authentication is validating that you're who you say you are. And authorization is getting access to the things that you want to get access to as the person you say you are. These are two different things. And there is a lot to learn about when it comes to login, authentication, authorization, all the fun nuts and bolts of security. And really what you're doing here, if you get into this world for the first time, is you're being introduced to the core of security and the human element of identity, which is politic filled. And that's why it's one of the reasons why these technical implementations are so convoluted at times, because in many cases, it's not a simple engineering problem. It's a political problem negotiated down to a technical standard between the different entities that each want to define what identity can or may be so that they can in turn have some semblance of safety or control over it. And so as you learn about authentication and authorization, you'll also get pulled into identity politics. This is unfortunate, but it is a side effect, and it's something that you will not get away from, because at the end of the day, we write code for people to use. And as part of that, we want them to be able to use it and feel safe. And as part of that, well, there are different ideas on what identity is, but uh, I'll get into that talk later. And so what you really want to understand is that at this point in your job, when you are asked to implement this kind of thing for the first time, you're being asked to shift the blame to someone else. The company understands that security is important from a regulatory perspective, but they don't want to spend money on it. You might get told that security is important, and you might even be given an extra few hours to, to work on the task because of it. But at the end of the day, the company still wants to make money. And they're not going to allow you to give them a solution that doesn't allow them to do that. As part of that, you should be understanding the CIA triad of security includes availability. And so if you don't actually build a system that people can access when they need to and as who they actually are, then it doesn't matter how secure you want it to be or how much security theater you want to include. It's not going to be a good business solution and you'll probably lose your job at that point. So. The best thing for you to do as an engineer is to follow the standard. It is not okay for you to just wander off into the woods alone and try to build your own better mousetrap. It may be tempting, because shinies are always tempting, but do not follow that will o' the wisp into the woods. You will not survive. It is simply too hard of a problem for you, as somebody who is new to the industry, to have the background, education, or quite frankly, the skill to be able to do correctly. And while there are many people who will say, oh, but I'm smarter than that. The fact is your failure is so costly for everybody else that your willingness to do that is such a negative that the company basically has an obligation to tell you to use OAuth 2. Because if you're going off the rails and trying to do your own thing, then, well, at that point, they've messed up so badly that the law can actually get involved. And the new stuff with the CISOs getting held liable for the security problems kind of calls that out. And so one of the things that you need to understand is that this is not a slight on you. This is not about them saying that you're not good enough. This is not me saying that you're not good enough. This is just me acknowledging as somebody who's worked in cybersecurity, probably longer than some of you have actually been in the industry at all, that nothing's perfect, but at least if we neurologically anchor you to OAuth 2 and its limits and the guardrails that are in place, you can't mess up too badly. And if you do mess up, well, then the system won't work and it'll fail in a secure way. That's the goal. 
And that is why people tell you to go use OAuth 2 and integrate with third parties. It's not just because it's the most secure and easy way. It's also to help them shift blame and to make sure that you don't go off the rails and do something stupid. And so as a result of that, you need to understand and need to have no ego about this, that it's not on you. It's not your problem. This is just how the industry is. Because unfortunately, anytime you deal with login or identity, you will deal with an identity politics on top of the technical issues and the fact that not everybody follows the law. So if the system is open and exposed and anybody can log in as the CEO, some guy in India or Iran or some other country, will do that just for the lulls and to see what he can get. And so as a result of that, you have an obligation as an engineer to protect everybody and to do the best you can to follow the standards. Now, OAuth has multiple standards and they are a pain in the butt. The specs themselves get updated often, as you can see. But the fun thing about that is they're all based on RFCs that are often in flux, sometimes not even accepted or stable, and in many cases denied the status of being official RFCs, and yet they're still implemented to such a degree, and they're so common to such a degree, that even though the RFC says it's not official and says it's not real, you're going to be reading it late nights trying to implement it anyway, because that's how that works. And so you need to understand that OAuth is the standard. OpenID Connect is, I think, the newer one. And if you don't know how to deal with it, then you don't know how to deal with identity in the modern web. And so because that is such a big moat to cross, there's also companies that, well, be perfectly blunt, they're malicious and they're predatory. And they actually go out of their way to create a company for themselves where they actively charge a company per user per month just to have a user account. That's how hard of a problem this is. It's so hard that there are companies that will literally offer you the ability to rent login. And you might even be considering one of them, but I wouldn't do it. I would personally stay away from these companies as much as possible because their centralized identity and stuff is such a big target that many of them have terrible security histories. And so as a result of that, you also have to deal with the fact that threat actors will actively try to work for them to gain access to their system just so they can attack one of their clients. And so you should, I'm not going to name the names of these companies. I don't want to market them. I don't want to do anything like that. But my recommendation is to stay away from those companies as much as possible. Read the specs, use a standard login system for your company, and try to keep the middlemen out of the system because they equate to an additional security risk. I know these companies will use security theater to try to make you think otherwise. But let's face it, if you're adding more nodes to the graph, you're adding more entry points. You're adding more security problems. So try to keep the middlemen to a minimum. And when you're dealing with scopes and grants and OAuth, keep the access to a minimum as much as possible. And err, in general, err on the side of caution and make sure that you're actively trying to make sure that you're integrating correctly, but that you're also not giving out access that you really don't want to. And uh, keep in mind that. Uh, when you actively go out of your way to understand these systems, a lot of those identity politics will rear their ugly heads. But you'll also, at that point, have a better understanding of them. And who knows, maybe you'll be able to make the point of being able to find the issue that nobody else could. So keep auditing, keep trying to make your security as the best as possible. But most of all, remember, OAuth is not perfect. The specs are ambiguous. And uh, that is why, for example, Google for the longest time there had a very different implementation of OAuth 2 uh, than others do. And I think they still have it, actually, because of the ambiguities in the spec. And so when I was a OAuth uh, engineer and I was doing security, 
in building login systems because I was one of the people who was willing to go off into the woods and learn the standard and then use that to build the village. Um, they actually had a lot of, of issues in that a lot of the specs were, in fact, just not official. And so you're going to be so caught up in this and you're going to learn so much. At the end of the day, you're going to learn exactly why you shouldn't try to build your own mousetrap on this. And yeah, it sucks. And yeah, you wish there was a, a copy and paste thing you could just do. But that's not how the world works. And if you're looking for that sort of solution as an engineer, you should probably just get out of suck.